Hello, uh, there. How you doing? How you do? I've been watching a lot of friends lately. What can I do? Uh, I have a surprise for you, kids. If you're new here, I usually make tutorials on Facebook. But today, we're gonna make the tutorial. Okay, this is the the one thing that a lot of people have been waiting for. And finally, oh, oh, oh. um, I don't know. Um, finally, this is a uh, uh, reality. Let's just play this, okay? This! This is real! It's 3D animation. <laughs> You're completely new. You're like, what is she talking about? Well, we can do, well, we can do 3D animation. It's like, I think that's big. I, 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 I do. I think that's huge. Magnificent. Did he use that word? I don't think he ever used it. So we can do 3D animation in Twitter. I'm gonna show you how you can do that, obviously. Let's get into this. So I have my pin. So this is Critter for you, you Critter 5. You can download that from their like build up on their website. I am on a Windows 10, I think. And I'm using a Huyo tablet. So far so good. I'm gonna stop this because now I find it annoying. Keep playing this all over again. Um, now, how to, to, to do 3D animation? Well, uh, first of all, when I tried this, kind of uh, didn't work out. I, I, I made my animation and tried to move the person's screen. It, it did not want it to work. The main reason for that is that you need to follow a specific thing to in order to make a screen your whole animation. And that is to put your animation layer that you have, in my case, this is my animation ball over here, and your transformation um, mask, these two, into a group. It's not that complicated, so I'm gonna basically redo this all over again for you to see. So um, I can hide this, I can actually delete this by, and uh, I have my, this is my line, okay? So we're not gonna touch this. We're, we're gonna create a new layer, we're gonna double click on that. We're gonna call ball, just ball, I guess. And we're gonna basically we're gonna come here on the frame zero. We're gonna create a new frame over here. I'm gonna grab my brush, and I'm gonna draw a ball. Fancy, I don't know. Uh, and then I'm gonna animate this on twos. So I'm gonna create a new frame over here. Check my onion skin. I'm gonna make the ball squash like this. On this frame, I'm gonna make the ball to jump like this. Oh my god, jump! Amazing animation happening over here. Oh no, it's not the, the best animation, but the idea is to show you how you can um, train your frame by frame animation. So uh, relax, okay? Relax. So, amazing. So I'm gonna throw, throw, I'm gonna go through, through the animation that I have. I'm gonna uncheck my this uh, on your skin. So I'm gonna. Whoop, 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 whoop. So basically, the ball is jumping. Uh, this is the best animation that you see uh, here on YouTube. I uh, got it to you. <laughs> this. Oh boy. So we have our animation. Here are the frames. Great. What we need to do now is we need to add uh, a um. What's the name? A mask, a uh, transformation mask layer. But we need to do that on the ball itself. So you're gonna click on your animation layer. In my case, this is my ball animation layer. Right button there. You go to add, and then you're gonna go and add a transform mask, which will add this transparent transform. Transparent. It is a mask on this layer, on your ball layer. So we gonna animate the position of that mask but before we do that we need to make sure that our ball layer and our mask layer they are connected but we need to put them into a group in order our training animation to work that was the part i was missing so right button on that and uh, uh, go to group and then quit group now we're gonna have a group this will be called group one in your case in my case it's group two because i already did this once so we're gonna have a group uh, layer in which we have our animation layer, which is our ball layer, <coughs> and we have our transform, transform mask layer. So now we can go and animate this ball position thingy, my ball. 
Oh yeah, we're gonna animate on our transformers. How to animate our transformers? You might think that you're gonna create more frames here, you're gonna move stuff. No, 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 no. We don't do anything in our animation timeline. I wanna burp again. Hey, sorry. Anyway, you didn't hear that because I cut that. Good. Blah. So where are we gonna do our animation on our transform uh, mask? Well, we need to have another another timeline, if you will. If you will. Why I'm talking about this? I don't know. Eh. Uh, we're gonna have another timeline. This timeline is for traditional animation frame by frame. We need to have our animation curves, which they come from, uh, if you go to settings, if you go to dockers, and here they are. I have opened them, so that's why they have a tick. It's over here, this little, this little docker here. If I move it, it will, I think by default it will come on the bottom, but this is what we are looking for and we need this in order to animate our uh, transformation mask. So I'm gonna put this next to my timeline. Uh, there we go. So it's easy, it's easier for me to switch between two. So I am over here. Now, it's, it's a bit scary, but it's not, okay? <laughs> okay? Make sure you are on your transform mask layer. Make sure you're on the beginning of that transform mask layer, which is frame zero from in most cases, right? And from this button, we are going to make a keyframe. Yes. Now it happens. It adds a couple of keyframes based on the axis and the Y's uh, of. Uh, so you can scale this. You can move this around. And where what we need to do is to go to let's say this frame. Move away your uh, your marker to a frame and go to your transform tool and the moment you click the transform tool as you notice it already creates uh, a couple of keyframes so now i can move this animation and i can move this to come over here so if i go back and if i play this bloop, 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 and then as you notice though it's a bit very fast right so that's one the other thing is if i stop this and if we actually go through the frames it jumps and then lands and then it stays the same which is kind of weird why this is happening is if i go to my animation timeline you will notice because we're still on the transform um, layer you will notice here we have this keyframe but on the ball layer we notice that our keyframe this is our last keyframe here and it takes this keyframe throughout the uh, animation so if you want to make your animation repeat uh, if you're making a, a walking animation i will show you in a second with the walking animation you would like this area here to be repeated with the previous keyframes that you have here so what you can do is to hit control and start selecting your keyframes like this right button and then copy keyframes and then you know keep the spacing even and come here and we're gonna paste them over here. So now if I go back, if I play, it's a bit too fast, I know, but it's pretty animation, kids. We have it, finally. We live long enough to see this, yay. Anyway, I'm gonna show you my walking animation. Hey, it's this uh, character, yahoo. Now, in order to make this work, because as you notice, it's here, I have a group uh, with this character. In this group, if I open it, I have the the lines, I have the highlights, and I have the color on the separate animated layers. I don't want to have that because in order to make the um, the training animation, in order to change the scale, to change the position, I need to have all of this on one layer, and then and then we're gonna repeat the process that we did with the ball. So what I can do is I can. Um, duplicate my layer, Ctrl and J, hide my original style layer. It's a group. Ugh. I can duplicate the group, Ctrl and E on the duplicated group, so we can merge everything to become one layer. So here we go, we're almost there. These are my keyframes on that. Uh, and now I can hit the right button here, I can add a transform mask. And we're almost there, except that I need to uh, put this layer and this transform mask into one group. I put it on that layer, and then you go to group, group, right here, quick group, and now both of these layers in a, are in one group. So now if I go to transform uh, mask layer, if I go to the first frame, 
and if I go to animation curves, I can add my first keyframe, right? And over here, let's say maybe here. Yeah, I will grab my transform tool and I will move this over here, all right? Or maybe we can move it out of the screen. And if I go back to the beginning position, if I move this off the screen again, if I go through the frames, it should work. Ah oh, man. Okay, let's just put this here. My first keyframe over here. Okay, so as you know, because if you put your animation uh, off the screen, it does not take the position for that. That's interesting. Uh, and let's just play this. Let's see, he's, he's walking, but we have the same problem as the one with the ball. It takes all the frames, and the moment that the animation ends on one frame, it, it just stays on that particular frame. So I'm gonna stop this, go to my animation timeline, go to my bear. Um, did I skip? Now I skip. Oh, stop. Uh, I'm gonna go to my animation with the bear uh, layer, right? So as you notice here, this is my animation. If I double click on that, I'll call this copy, let's say copy. So you can see it here on your animation timeline. Uh, I can just copy the keyframes so they can repeat. Uh, copy or, or clone, it's up to you how you want to use this function. But uh, yeah, and I'm going to copy maybe this keyframe. And now if I play this, it's uh, working, it's working. And it's, there's, there's this pretty animation. He changes the position. It's, it, yeah, congratulations. Great stuff. Hopefully, you got the idea how to do the tree animation. Obviously, you can change not just the position, but you can also change the um the scale. Go back to your transformation mask, because that's where you can make those changes and go to animation curves. And if you are with your um transform tool, right? And now uh, let's say I can make the bear well make the bear bigger here. It changes a little bit. That ah, oops, I moved stuff. And here you can make the 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 bigger the bear smaller like this. I'm just trying to play around to see the difference, okay? So I'm gonna play this today. It's becoming bigger. Oh, he's changing his uh, position because of the the curse that we have here. Not position, um, scale. There we go. I thought that was cool. Hopefully, this was helpful to you. Leave a like because that apparently helps. Subscribe if you're new here. Uh, I make those kind of videos once in a while. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, you know, stay healthy, stay happy. <sighs> and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.